So the next thing I want to talk about is charging your clicker. So in the beginning stages of training for detection, we are going to be using a clicker with 99% of the dogs to tell them what we want them to do, right? And what, what they've done right. As you saw with my dogs I demoed with this morning, I wasn't using a clicker with them. So you'll hit a spot in training where if you want to, you can switch over from using a clicker to your verbal marker. And I'm gonna take a minute to explain what the heck the difference in all of these things are. What are verbal markers? What are clickers? Why are they useful? I'm going to give you kind of the layman's term explanation of all of this because that's gonna be the best way for you to explain it to your average client. And then in your handouts and, and about a thousand different videos you've seen and in every other class you've taken uh, for the DVD, we'll have a separate clip that people can go to if you want the more scientific style version of what markers and clickers and all that good stuff are. If you're a trainer, you definitely need to know the information, but it's also important to know how to talk to uh, normal owners in a way that they can understand why this stuff is useful. Getting owners to use marker training can be difficult if they don't understand what the purpose of it is. It just seems like an extra step for them. So it's important that they understand the benefits of it and why we use them. So <clears throat> clickers are a form of marker or a conditioned reinforcer, a bridge. These are a moment marker. These are all common terms that we're all talking about the same thing, whether it's clickers or verbal markers, depending on the dog. If you have a dog that's deaf, for example, that can't hear a verbal marker or a clicker, uh, you can use vibration, you can use thumbs up. I've used all kinds of different markers for dogs that can't hear. They've done it with cockroaches and flipping light switches. There's a whole bunch of things that you can use. But essentially, in a nutshell, what marker training is, is we are looking to bridge the gap between the time my dog does a desired behavior and the time it takes me to deliver a reward in this case. So for detection, it's all gonna be reward-based training all here in the beginning. So how do I let my dog know what they did right? My dog, you saw my dogs worked earlier today. I was standing eight feet behind them when they indicated on source. How do I let them know that they were right when it's gonna take me three or four seconds to get up there? So there are systems that train without markers. So there are uh, different trainers who don't use markers. And in those training systems, their dog's alerts look a lot different. And what their dogs most commonly look like is what we call a, a look back alert. So the dog will find source and it will look back at their owner for a reward. Now there's a lot of kind of misnomers about why their dogs do that. And it really doesn't have anything to do with anything besides dog training and science and how the dog's brain works. So you will hear a lot of people say who train in that system, we let our dogs decide how they're going to alert. We let our dogs choose how they want to tell us that they've found odor. Well, the simple fact is your dog is not choosing to do anything. Your dog is going to replicate what they have been rewarded for. So when you're not using markers, if I don't have a way to let my dog know exactly what they were doing when they earned a reward, it'd look like this. My drawers start to get closed. At this point, my dog is searching and they've located where their food reward is. Now I have to get over there and open up that drawer so they can eat their food reward. So I have to walk up to the drawer and I have to open it and then they get to eat. So your dog is standing there in front of the drawer saying, oh look, my food's in there. And then what happens next? You come into your dog's peripheral vision and you open up the drawer and you feed them. So for the first few repetitions of this, your dog might stay focused on the drawer while you come up and open it. But after a couple reps, they're like, okay, I find it. And then you're gonna come open that drawer for me. So what starts to happen? The dog finds it and says, hey, are you gonna come open up this drawer? And then what do you do? You walk over and open the drawer. That's rewarding that chain of behaviors. So the dog learned what I'm supposed to do when I find it is to look at you and you're gonna come and give me my reward. The dog didn't decide, hey, I think when I locate the hide, I wanna look at the owner 
because that's what drives with my personality. You rewarded that. You captured that behavior and that chain of behaviors, so that's why your dog does it. Now, that's one thing a dog might do. I mentioned that at some point in the training process, we're going to see how the dogs naturally manifest frustration. So some dogs just get impatient and say, hey, can you come open this thing? Other dogs are going to bark. Other dogs are going to want to use their feet. Dogs with a lot of obedience, if I had a hide in a low drawer, they might lie down and offer a down because they've been lured into a down. But they're going to be offering a behavior strictly based on the fact that they're frustrated and nothing else. There's no more thought that goes into the dog's brain other than I want that reward and I want this person to hurry up and come give it to me. So essentially, if you're not using markers, you're just capturing your dog's manifestation of frustration. So <clears throat> that's not ideal because, number one, some of those things I listed are disqualifications. So again, if your dog is using their feet or biting at source, you're going to get disqualified. But there are trainers out there that will let that go and be rewarded because, as they say, that's how your dog is choosing to alert. And they want their dog to have freedom when they're searching. So again, the man that I mentioned earlier with the pit bull that punched into the container and the tin went flying, he, when I chatted with him, he had asked his instructors numerous times to help him fix it. And they kept saying, well, there's nothing to fix. That's just how your dog wants to alert. So that's what we have to reward. When really, that's what we've captured, that's what we have reinforced, so that's what the dog's going to continue to offer. So what do I do? How do I fix that? What is the solution to bridging the gap between when the dog is doing what I want and when I can actually get them a reward? And that's where markers come in. They're exactly like they sound. I want to mark a moment in time. We post our social media videos to our website, Learberg.com, a week or two before we post them to our YouTube channel. These early release videos can be found on the front page of our site or by going to the site and selecting video on demand from the toolbar and then select free videos. Thank you for watching.